We got ourselves a brand new week and a brand new episode of On Top and Hot, but you got the same old host, John Zadar. <laughs> and this is the infamous date, September 11th, 911. Now, what I do on this show every day, I go hunting for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. I call these hot penny stocks. And when I do my research looking for these stocks to share with you, I'm doing it by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for charts that look tempting, that look like they're ready to run, a chart that has heat. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go messing around with all the information looking for a catalyst. When I find one, voila. I've got myself a hot penny stock, and I got three of them to share with you today, like always. First one we're going to take a look at is ticker LLAP. This is Turan Orbital Corporation. Her chart is getting strong. She's been trying to break out over the 200 for a while, but she's trying it again, and there is a lot of good information around the company. She's had lots of news. She's expanding. Her financials look good. So I'm thinking now would be a good time since she's trying to break out. LLAP finished the day at $1.40 and just a little bit over 11% gains. This is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, which means you're going to be able to trade it for free and you can trade it pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what does LLAP do? Well, they tell us over here that Turan Orbital is a leading manufacturer of satellite products primarily serving the aerospace and defense industries. Turan Orbital provides end-to-end -end satellite solutions by combining satellite design, production, launch planning, mission operations, and on-orbit support to meet the needs of the most demanding military, civil, and commercial customers. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we had a nice increase there, just under 50%, jumping from 2.2 million up to 3.1 million. Share structure for Turan Orbital. Well, they don't give us much information here. All they tell us is the outstanding share count, which is about 172 million. Float isn't going to be above that, could be considerably less. Financials for LLAP. At the end of 2022, she had $94 million. We know it's millions because of these three zeros they tell us to add to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And she was running at $17 million down. Looking at her quarterly, well, she's doing good. They are increasing. A year ago, she was at $21 million. At the end of this last six-month period, she was at $32 million. And looky there, she's in the profits now. Now, they did just increase by 51% from their first quarter till their second quarter. They've got about $48 million in cash, but they've got about $311 million in debt. The big deal here, though, is that they've got $2.6 billion worth of backlog orders. Orders that they are just waiting to finish and get paid for. And they believe they will be paid 80% of that by the year 2025. That is $1.75 billion between now and 2025. So there's a lot of potential sitting on the table. Taking a look at her disclosures, we have an SC13DA here. This is when somebody comes in and invests into the company. And normally, they're big investments, so much so that they own a percentage of the company. Well, this one is by Lockheed Martin Corporation. This is a very big corporation, and this company does a lot of business with them. And Lockheed Martin already owns a substantial amount in this company. But right now, they've just added to it, and they currently have control of just over 30% of the company. And then we got an 8K here. This came out on the 15th, and this has to do with their financials, which we were just talking about. Taking a look at that news. I think I've got it highlighted here. Yes. Now, actually, all of that news is really about the same thing. We have four pieces of news here that all came out here in September. Turan Orbital unveils new product line of seven satellite buses. These are actually like chassis. You know, like when they make these electric cars, they make one chassis that they can put all sorts of different cars on top of that chassis. Well, that's kind of what they're doing with satellites. They've got this, well, they've got seven different bodies, but they can make lots of different satellites with those seven bodies. 
Tran Orbital launches initiative to shorten satellite buses systems delivery, which is what the next two are all about. They just expanded. Tran Orbital opens a 60,000 square foot factory addition in Irvine, California. This now gives them a total of 92,000 square feet. And what it helps them do is make these things faster. They believe they can now put these satellites out in 30 days and 60 days if they have a bunch of stuff they have to add to them. But they are getting them out quick and that's how they're making their money. So let's go take a look at this chart. It is looking like a breakout, but she's tried it many times before. Hopefully this time she's successful. We're going to chart all these stocks over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You get this free when you sign up with TD Ameritrade and signing up with them, that's free too. So we are looking at ticker LLAP, Turan Orbital Corporation. This is a one-year, one-day chart. We've got our 52-week high a year ago of $4.41 and a 52-week low of $1.08. That was halfway through August. She had a big jump and bump here in February, almost 100% going from $1.80 up to $3.50. And as you can see, she is trying to break out, but you can't see it much here. So let's come on down to that six-month, four-hour view. So there's that huge jump we had. She fell very quickly underneath the 200, has been trying to get up over it, but you can see the 200 is on a very steep incline. And right now, I have to agree, it is on a steep incline. But there is a lot of power there right now. She's pushing through it with some very big bars, and she's sitting on top of it now, clear up here at $1.40. Volume is nothing special. It's average, but our oscillators are well above average. Every single one of them is pushing up right now and on fire. Four hour chart is actually hot. The only thing I don't like is that our 200 is coming down pretty steep. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So here's our extended low of $1.08. She jumped off of that very quickly, getting back up onto the 200 and then slipping back up underneath. She jumped here about 10 days ago, got up on top of the 200 and has just been hanging there. And then three days ago, she started to push herself up and today she launched herself, going from $1.25 up to $1.45 and pulling back to $1.40. Osculators are still hot. All of them are pushing up. We have had a pullback on our RSI, but it's still in the overbought up there at 72. Five day, five minute. Nothing really going on here for three days. We hit a low of $1.18. She jumped off that low, got on top of the 200, bounced off of it one time, and then went to the 50-day. Pushed off that 50 and launched herself, hitting that $1.45 early in the day, 11 in the morning. She came back down and actually wrestled with the 20. Once all the SMAs came close, she then got a push up and now she's falling back down to the 50. After market hours, she's fighting with that 50 and it looks like she's losing the battle right now. All of our oscillators say she is falling, but she's got very strong revenues. She's just expanded her business. She's going to be getting satellites out faster. Everything is looking good for the company right now. So I'm thinking LLAP is definitely worth putting on your watch list, especially since she is in the midst of a breakout. Well, I'm excited to finally have an American cannabis company to share with you. I have shown you a lot of cannabis companies in the last 10 days, but they've all been from Canada, primarily working in the States, but none of them were American companies. AAWH Ascend Wellness Holdings is an American cannabis company. Her chart is ripping right now, like a hippo wearing tight jeans. <laughs> it has been running since uh, August 28th. Since the news came out about the HHS, the Health and Human Services, contacting the DEA, requesting that they reschedule cannabis from the dangerous Schedule 1 down to the safe Schedule 3. We haven't had anything else since then. Now, initially when the news came out, there were a handful of cannabis stocks that took off. But now there are a bunch of them running without any more news. This is all speculation, all hope. You see all those tickers I just threw up on the screen? All of those came from one scan today, double zero one to $3. Those are all cannabis stocks. 
Now, I can't guarantee that's all of them that were in that scan, but it's showing you the proof in the pudding. There's a lot of cannabis running right now. So, AAWH, her chart is hot. It has been running since then, and it is a rocket stock right now. And normally, I wouldn't want to talk to you about a rocket stock because they go up and come right back down and crash to the earth. Well, this is a different scenario here. We're all waiting for the DEA to say something. And between now and then, God only knows what the cannabis sector is going to do. CGC today went up over 100%. I made like 120% off of my investment so far, and I've only had it a week. Yes, it's a hot sector. So AAWH finished today at $1.26 with about 13.5% gains. And she's got everything going on over here. She's on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. You get lots of information and filings from them, audited financials. It's the best tier you can be on, the most trustworthy, the most transparent. They've got a verified profile, transfer agent verified, and they've got a penny stock exempt. This is a bonus for us. This removes the risk of them being, say, a startup company. How do they do that? By being in business for three to five years, having millions of dollars in assets or revenues during that time, and kept up with their financials. In other words, they've proven to us that they're responsible and at work making money. That's what we want to see in a company. And they've got independent directors here. The only reason I know that you need independent directors listed over here is when the company has plans to uplist. You have to have independent directors to uplist, and you really don't need them for any other reason. Now, I haven't read anything about an uplist, but there they sit. So, what do they tell us about Ascend Wellness? They tell us that their core business is manufacturing, distributing, and marketing a portfolio of owned cannabis consumer packaged good brands. We distribute and market these products primarily through a company-owned retail store called Dispensaries, and the third-party licensed retail cannabis stores. Our consumer products portfolio is primarily generated from plant material that we grow and process ourselves. Yeah, it's called marijuana, cannabis. And they got a range of cannabis products, including flour, pre-rolls, concentrates, vape, capsules, tinctures, edibles, topicals, and other cannabis-related products. Now, jumping on over to the website to get a little more information, they tell us here they've got 31 dispensaries, they've got six grow greenhouses, you have to be growing your marijuana, the stuff you smoke and eat, you have to have that being grown indoors, hemp can be grown outdoors, marijuana indoors. They have three house brands, and would you believe they produced over 80,000 pounds of marijuana last year, egads. They tell us here that AWH is a U.S. multi-state operator with assets in seven states, including Illinois, Michigan, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. The company focuses on limited licensed states east of the Rockies. They are a vertical company. They are taking care of everything from start to finish with the company. Seed to sale. I'm trying to shrink my page here. So as I told you, they've got 31 different dispensaries in those seven states. And they've got three different brands. Zooming in on those brands a little bit here. They have Simply Herb, which is Simply Herb. It's just a jar of cannabis. Then they've got Ozone. Ozone produces vapes gummies, pre-rolls, and they also have a flower. And then you have Ozone Reserve, which is their premier cannabis when you don't mind spending the big bucks, vapes and the cannabis itself. So this is what the company's got. They've got seven states they're working in, 31, and they're making a lot of money. Oh, you haven't seen that yet. <laughs> Let's go take a look. We'll start off over here with the relative volume as we normally do. Over the last 30 days, this company's been doing about 226,000 shares a day, just under a quarter million. Today, she did do a jump up to 381,000 shares. Share structure for AAWH. Outstanding share count. We got 206 million. They tell us that the insiders own about 28 million of those shares, leaving us about 178 million in the float. If these numbers are correct, our float is 178 million. 
Not a great float. It's kind of high, but we have seen really, really worse floats than that. So we're not going to cry. Ah, now I can show you the revenues. They are impressive. They have been growing by leaps and bounds year after year. 2019, they were at $12 million. One year later, they did 12 times that much, almost $144 million. Another year goes by, they more than double that to $332 million. And here at the end of 2022, they pushed it up to $405 million, just cresting that half billion mark. And as you can see, they are in profit all along the way. Strong profits. Looking at the quarterly, well, they're growing quarter after quarter as well. It may be gradual, but it is steady growth. So they look really good on the financial side of things. Looking at her disclosures, yeah, we've got an S3 and an effect here. The S3 tells us that they are putting 9.8 million more shares on the market. That's going to increase the flow to about 190 million now. And the effect says it's in effect. It's happening right now. And their most recent financial came out on the 9th of August. If you really want to know about the company, that's your best resource right there. Forget about running around on Google. Just jump on in there. They have everything from the day the company started. Now let's jump on over to that news. So we're just taking a look at what they're doing. I basically covered everything. Back in April, the company opened their first dispensary in Illinois. They also closed an acquisition of four Maryland dispensaries, which in June they have put into use. So they've got that going. They made a deal here in May with Praetorian. Praetorian has their own brands, hot brands. One is called Binsky and one's called Ani. And this company is going to sell their brands for them in their distribution network. And of course, they're going to make royalties for doing that. Then we've got a news press here that came out in June. This sounds like a debt conversion to me. Smart move. I love these. This is where you take somebody you owe money to. Looks like they owed $7 million to somebody. And instead of giving them money, you give them shares of stock. So now you've turned your debtor into an investor. It is a great move. And then they have their financial results, which have just come out. And we talked about that as well. So let's go take a look at this chart. It is a rocket stock. As I said, I normally wouldn't show you a stock that's running this hard. But being that the DEA has not yet made any mention of what they're going to do, anything can happen between now and then. And who knows when that's going to be. Come on. I told you this is a rocket stock. This is ticker AAWH Ascend Wellness. And of course, we are looking at a six-month, four-hour view. It was back in January. We had a high of $1.61. She had a long, drawn-out fall, tapping the 200 a couple times on her way down. And it was on August 28th, she hit a low of $0.46. Cents. That's the same day the news came out about the DEA. And she started to move on that news after market. She started to push up. And from that point, she hasn't stopped pushing up. She's been pushing up every single day. Not one red bar in any one of those days on the four-hour chart. She went from 46 cents up here to $1.30. You're looking at over 300% run right there. And it doesn't look like it's ready to stop. Now, what I find most interesting here is that our volume has been growing since back here, way before the news. You can see it has been increasing. My impression, the 200 was getting close. She was eager to get over it. She was building up momentum. She was going to take opportunity whether she had an excuse or not. The DEA news is a perfect excuse. Oscillators are going to the moon and on fire. Everything is pushing up. Our RSI is clear up there at 83 right now. The four-hour chart is super hot. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour chart. Well, half the chart is cold as ice. The other half is hot as you know what. This has been climbing every single day with just a little bit of roll here and there. Didn't touch the 20. It looks like it did. It got close, but it did not touch. It has solely been on the nine-day SMA. Nice and light. Our oscillators have a lot of strength in them, but these last two red bars at the end of today have cooled her down just a little bit. But surprisingly enough, our RSI is pushing up right now. We should see some green bars at the end of the day here on our five-minute. Yes, we do. Oh, nice recovery. Nice chart. 
Look at that. You got a low bubble in this corner of 76 cents, high up here of $1.32. You're at about 85% gains right there. We're above the 200, rolling on that 50-day SMA all the way uphill. And right here today, looks like she had a rubber ball bounce. <laughs> she came down underneath the 50 and like a rubber ball going underwater, she came right back up immediately. She is at $1.26, which puts her right on top of the 50-day SMA right now. That is a perfect placement. Our oscillators, oh, they're in recovery. Our PPO is about ready to do a crossover. Our MACD is doing the crossover right now, and our RSI is climbing. AAWH, it is a rocket stock. Normally, I wouldn't say, look at this one. But with the DEA news being who knows when, how far out there, and with these constantly running every day, you don't want to miss out on these folks. These stocks have been undervalued for a long time anyways. They've been looking for a good excuse. And if that news comes out and you happen to be in one of these, you could really get a big, big runner. AAWH, it's worth your time. Will wonders never cease? Would you believe I have got another hot American cannabis company to share with you? Yes, I do. This is ticker AMMJ, American Cannabis Company. Now, her chart, it's just like the last one. It's been running since August 28th, maybe even August 26th. And she, too, has put 300% gains on the chart. And she's got some dynamite catalysts. Management has been buying a lot of shares of the company's stock. And they just had a merger and didn't even put out a news press about it. So AMMJ, she finished the day at 6.2 cents with almost 15% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to refer to this as the better tier. It's better because you have to audit your financials to be here. They've also got that verified profile and transfer agent verified. And they too are penny stock exempt. So they look solid. Now, this is a cannabis company that's a little different than the other ones in the fact that they don't touch the flower. They don't even work with the plant. They tell us here that American Cannabis Company offers end-to-end -end solutions to existing and aspiring participants in the cannabis industry. We utilize our industry expertise to provide business planning and market assessment services, assist state licensing procurement, create business infrastructure, and implement operational best practices. However, the company does have products. They just aren't the kind of products we're used to seeing. I am over here at their website, AmericanCannabisConsulting.com. They've got three products. They have what they call a Sohum Living Soil. This is an active soil. You add water to it, and they've got a bunch of stuff in there that is activated when you do that. If you want all the information, you can just watch that video. They also have these cultivation cubes. When speed to market and location flexibility are key considerations, the cultivation cube is an ideal solution. These plug-and-play cultivation units provide an optimal cannabis cultivation environment and allow you to get into production immediately once licensed. A lot of these companies are just waiting for their license, but they can't do anything until they get it. They have to build greenhouses. Well, while they're building, they could be growing using these. Now, they also have indoor cannabis cultivation set up. With indoor cannabis cultivation, every cubic foot counts. Our high-density cultivation system allows you to eliminate vertical and horizontal loss, maximizing your profit potential. As you can see, they're tear growing here. You're getting a lot more growth in your square footage there. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she had a nice jump. I'd say about 650% going from 343,000 shares to just under 2 million. Share structure for AMMJ? Outstanding share count, 171 million. Restricted shares, they tell us that the insiders own about 72 million. That leaves us about 98 million in the float. Not a bad float, not a good float. It's average, right? Financials for AMMJ. Well, over the last three years, she's taken a big jump, going from roughly 2 million up to 18.8 .8 million. Looking at her quarterly, well, that's all over the place. Year ago, she was doing $4 million, dropped to $2 million, 
jumped to 11 million and then all the way down to three quarter million. I'm not sure what happened in this quarter, but I would sure like to find out. Looking at our disclosures, we got a lot of important information over here, folks. First, let's take a look at this 8K. This is about a merger that they are getting involved with. It hasn't closed yet. On September 5th, 2023, the shareholders gave consent in writing and determined that the terms and conditions of the agreement and plan of merger with hyperscale Nexus Holding is just reasonable and fair to the company and the shareholders, and they want to go through with it. Now, I had no idea what this company was, so I did a search, and I'm not going to go into this deep, but they're into all the digital stuff. HPC, high performance computing, blockchain tech, artificial intelligence, metaverse infrastructure, big data analytics, and internet of things. Honestly, I don't have any clue what they plan on doing, but they are doing a merger. That's a catalyst. Speaking of catalysts, we've got some form forms here that are exciting. First one, these are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares. And we're only interested if they buy them or sell them. Well, here we have a purchase. This is the vice president. He has just bought himself a half million at two cents. He bought these on August 25th. He has just tripled his money. Another one of those form fours. This one is a director. Wow. They bought 17250000 at two cents. They too have tripled their money. Another form four here. 10 million. This is the chief executive officer and chief financial officer. So everybody is getting into the game. However, we do have one person who's not playing the same as everybody else. This is the chief operations officer. He has sold one and a half million shares at two cents. Do you think he's kicking himself today when it's at six cents? Probably. So we've got a lot of catalysts here. A lot of shares have been bought and we've got this merger that hasn't even been put out in a news press yet. And I couldn't find it on Google either. So I wonder how many people even know about that yet. And taking a look at the news. That's not it. Where's my news? <laughs> I don't have it. So let's jump on into the news over here. So what have we got here? Uh, oh, that's why we don't have any news. There is no current news. The most current piece of news came out in December of 2022, and they received certification of registration for their Sohum Living Soil. So even though they don't have any news, like I said, they've got a lot of things going on, hot things, and the chart is just as hot. Let's go take a look at that. You're now looking at ticker AMMJ. This is American Cannabis Corporation, and naturally we're looking at a six-month, four-hour view. This low bubble is a 52-week low. That is just over a penny, hit in May. And our 52-week high hit September 6th, 8.7 cents. Now off of this low bubble, she did try to climb, but she wasn't getting anywhere. She was stuck up underneath that 200. Just a couple days before the DEA news came out, she started pushing up above that 200. Once the news came out, she stayed above the 200 and started to climb and got a very strong surge here on the 6th, going from 3.5 cents up to 8.5 cents. You're looking at a 150% run right there. Came back down, landed on her 9-day SMA, and again, she is climbing. Our SMAs are looking sweet. They're all turning up nice and evenly. Volume is strong, not super strong, but a lot stronger than it was in the past. And our osculators have a lot of strength in them. PPO is pushing up, MACD is pushing up, RSI is at 67 right now. Our 20-day, one-hour view. <laughs> not a whole lot going on until the 24th. A little early, she started pushing up. 28th, she was up on top of it, and she started to push, and she has been climbing. She came down on top of the 20. That's what really held her up. It was that rubber ball bounce going under the 20 and coming right back up and sitting on top of the 20 right now. SMAs looked luscious. Osculators had a lot of strength, but that one red bar there has pulled them down just a little bit, and our RSI has cooled down. It is now down there at 57. Five-day, five-minute wild chart. 
So we had a low five days ago of two and a half cents and she ripped up there to 8.7 cents, came down right about in the middle, went sideways for a few days. Ah, brand new 200 day SMA, though it is pushing up. The price came underneath it. <laughs> Another rubber ball bounce underneath the 200 and then on top. She tested it once, tested it twice, and is she going to bounce? Well, let's look at our oscillators. What do they say? I can zoom in on this one so we can get a better view. Let's see. Uh, she's going down. Our MACD is going down. Actually, it looks like she's going to try to tap that 200 again. But again, folks, we just had a lot of shares bought by the insiders. Why did they do it? <laughs> Why did one sell? That's the real question. And they've got a merger going on. Once that news press comes out, a lot of people are going to see that. I'm expecting the volume to pick up on this. And then you've got the DEA news. Do we need any more catalyst, folks? Really? AMMJ, put it on your watch list. If you write it down, write it down. If you do it digitally, do it digitally. Just do it. I think I gave you three very hot stocks here, folks. LLAP may not be cannabis, but she is definitely cooking on the charts. And the other two charts that are cannabis are ripping it up right now. I am loving the cannabis market right now. I got into it back in 2018 when she started to fall and she fell all the way up to COVID. So right now is so exciting to me. It should be exciting to you too, folks, because as I said earlier, all of these cannabis stocks are way undervalued. They needed a reason for the investors to put their money into them. Now they've got a reason. If the DEA approves this, I can only imagine how far these are going to go. Tilray, currently at $3.50, 2018, it was $300. Think about it, folks. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.